And so this is the process that we are going to be investigating like in class. You can see my demonstration photograph is um, on the wall. I wanted you all to be able to see it uh, before I began. I'm actually going to move it uh, to the left side because I'm right handed. So you can kind of see what I'm working from. But I'm going to move it to the left so that I don't have to look over my shoulder when I am drawing. Uh, as in looking over my right shoulder. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, kind of just a planial assessment of contour. So by that I mean kind of like these like harder edge the shapes. Just doing like the outside edges of the, of the um, head structure and neck structure shoulders. Okay, so um, that's going to be something which is measurable. So I can take my measuring stick and I can start to go through and measure the angles of the exterior contours and make sure that they are relatively um, within you know, the angles that I can see in my drawing. Once I have them sort of established, that kind of gives me the envelope or the outside space in which um, the outside contours create the envelope in which the head, neck, and shoulders will appear. Now you all are gonna be working from a gridded photograph, so that will help you to check distance because the gridded system will help you to locate where things go. So the sighting and measuring is something which has been kind of hard for us to kind of do in class since we're online. But here you can kind of see what that looks like when using your sighting tool. So then I'm going to do kind of what we talked about. I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to check for um, like angles that I can help uh, assess distance from. Um, so I'm going to check from here to here in my photograph with my measuring tool to find the angle. I draw the line and then I measure the line against the tool and go back to the photograph and that works. And I could do the same thing um, over here, like I'm pretty certain about that point. And I can say sort of maybe I think that's going to have to go out further out there. And I'm correct, like that has to go further out there. So I can go ahead and redraw that angle. And now I can say, okay, from this angle here to like here, let's see what that angle is. And so I draw the line and then check again. And each time I draw the line, I, I can, I double check. And so that helps me to make sure that um, I draw the line, I check it against the photograph, and then I make a correction and I check again. And that kind of helps me to keep track of my, the places I need to reassess. So I can tell from the photograph, and when I, I'm trying to keep my paintbrush in here for you, when I measure from the bottom of the hair to the shoulder, that this here is, is too, I have it too soon. It needs to be further out there, so I won't actually see it because that angle is much wider than the angle that I had. So going through and finding, you know, for me in this photograph, like a re really key locational device is like the outside edge of my, of my hair. And, you know, in terms of like, why is that working for me? It might not work for you. In the photograph, I have a very blunt haircut. Um, and so it, it's actually creating like a really strong point that I can kind of track. 
um, my angles from and, and it's really working quite well. That might not work for me if I had a much softer haircut, um, but like in terms of the haircut I have in this photograph, it's really blunt and it's making a really strong angle. So I can follow the line from the outside uh, point of my chin to the outside point of my hair and it creates a line there that I can measure that is actually pretty similar to the line of my mandible. So now I kind of have a basic sort of understanding that my outside contours are pretty good in terms of my angles, I can now measure them. So I'm gonna measure this distance here, so like this distance here and check that to make sure that the width of the head to the height of the head is in the correct correlation. So when I measure from here to here, it should be about one to one and a half out. Looks pretty good, okay? So then I can start to bring in like interior contours, like here for the hair. Okay, and so then I can check that by measuring the distance from here to here. I'm gonna use my fingers this time so you can see a bit better kind of know what I'm doing. Like the distance, so the distance from the outside edge of my hair to the inside edge of my hair creates this unit of measurement. And I see that if I just move that over on the picture uh, between the inside contour of the hair and the outside contour of the cheek, it's about a one-to-one -one re relationship. So that looks about correct, okay? So this relationship here looks like it's in a pretty good relationship to here. Now, I want to now find the median line of the head. So when I look in the photograph, this is the outside of my cheek and the point of my nose is just about here. So my head is turned pretty much, um, you know, it's almost in profile, but not quite. It's not three quarters. It's, it's a little bit beyond three quarters of a turn. So the median line is further over here. So I have a much larger distance from here than I do from here. And so then that tells me that my head's turned that way. So then if I come through here, if I think about the outside edge of my zygomatic as being the difference between like the frontal part of my head and the side, I have a really strong highlight on my zygomatic here where it turns from the zygomatic bone to the zygomatic arch. And that is helping me to say, well then I think that this space through here is all sort of like part of the front of my face and then it starts to transition into the side. So then the other side of my face is over on this side here. So eyes are halfway up the head, but my head is turned upwards, so they're gonna be a little higher. So my eyes are up here. And then this is the bottom of my nose in here. And then my mouth in here. And then my chin. So one thing now that I will do is I'm just going to mass in my, uh, some larger shapes of value to help me to establish kind of uh, the way that light is going to create dimension. And so when I squint my eyes, which helps me to see value, there's lots of places where I see like mid-tone uh, and shadow, and that helps me to differentiate from where there is light. So like coming through here, whee! <laughs> like this is all a pretty dark value. Um, over here, it's pretty dark. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tone of my paper as my mid-tone. I'm just gonna mass in where I see things that are darker than the mid-tone. The bottom of the nose looks pretty dark. And because I'm using the vine charcoal, y'all, which is what you're going to use in the beginning stages, I can kind of really, I can mask things in here that maybe later on are a little bit brighter. And it doesn't really matter because I can just um, lighten that vine charcoal just by touching it even with my finger.
So like in my eyeball, I'm not looking for like eyelashes or details right now. I'm just looking for places where I see like the darker, darker planes, because all I'm worried about right now is just structure. I'm not worried right now about specific details. So massing in the shapes value, just like you just did in your detail, in your uh, digital drawing. This is all about structure, planial structure. This is why you need to have a photograph with just one light source because you want to be able to see those planes so that it's clear as to where the different planes are because um, that's going to help you to get a more accurate drawing. So then right now, just to show you, I can go ahead and I'm going to actually lift out some of these lighter planes so that you can see like where the light would be. And then we will have three planes of value. And we only really need three planes of value to show dimensionality. Not sure if the camera's really picking up the highlight, but. So all throughout all these things, the clavicle, sternomastoid, zygomatic, like we start to see the egg and the lessons from the egg. Value is created by relationships of one value plane to another. And those value planes in some cases are pretty hard edged and in other places they are smoother transitions. Right now, in the beginning, we want everything to be pretty hard edged because it's talking about the structure that we are trying to create. So now that I have established like some um, large planes of value, I want to use my siding stick to um, check the angles of like the eyes, the nose, the mouth. So when I do that, I'm trying to keep it in the camera for you. I can't really think. Uh, the eyes are going to come through here. So that the angle looks pretty good. The bottom of the nose is basically going to equal that angle. And then the mouth is going to basically equal that angle. And so like you, you can kind of think like if the mouth is going in this direction, then the nose is going to go in this direction and then the eyes will go in that direction too. Okay. So you can start to sort of strengthen your, your edges um, by these big planes of value. Now, one of the things here is like, as you start to strengthen your planes and you're looking for these big shapes, you want to then continue to measure in sight. So once you have your big shapes sort of established, I just think these planes in here need to go a bit darker. Once things start to get established, then you want to start doing what we were doing before in all of our other drawing, which is looking for angles so that you can start to 
assess the location of form. So measuring and citing, uh-oh, I froze. So like measuring and citing your angles between like the um, outside edge of the nostril to the interior edge of the eye. So that has an angle. And so if you get that angle right, you're gonna get the eye into the correct location. The angle from the outside edge of the nose, for instance, the outside edge of the mouth, helps us to place the uh, nose into the correct position. And then you could say, well, what's the angle from here to here? And measure that angle and check that angle there. And so using like the stuff that we've been talking about, the techniques that we've been talking about, where we've been you know, learning how to find these exterior angle measurements is really gonna help you when you're drawing from your photograph to make sure that everything is in the right place. This needs to be higher. So you want to go through and you want to find the location of these major forms by establishing your different angles that you can see. Okay. Now in my photograph, I'm kind of looking up and to the side and that's much more complicated to draw than the, the point of view that you're going to be doing, which will be straightforward. And a lot of times students find, you know, they want to do a more complicated uh, point of view and I really don't want you to. I really want you to focus on just the straightforward uh, point of view. Um, so here, when we are looking at these like more complicated um, points of view, all the things that we talked about the other day about like location of things can still be seen. So like the corner of the mouth and the pupil are lining up the tear duct and the outside edge of the nostril are lining up. And so those things still do apply here, but they're just a bit more complicated because the head's slightly turned away, okay? So then something like, like my nose, like I have kind of a bump in my nose. And so like it kind of comes out and then it goes down. And so that's gonna be important to establish because it's covering this side of my face. So you want to look to see like where does the location of the nose um, cover uh, part of the, uh, the, the cheek because that will tell you when your nose is in the right location or not. So there that goes back to like the cracked egg shell. And where the cracked egg shell is like, you know, where the edge that's been cracked is hiding the interior of the shell. So like on the lips, look for structure, not line. And think about big shapes, not little shapes. And if it looks awkward in the beginning, that's okay. I'm way more interested in, in an awkward and correct structural beginning than I am in like a pretty picture. Because if it's not structurally sound in the beginning, then it won't ever be a pretty picture because it will always be wrong. I have to stand in front of the camera here.
it's difficult to always draw from the side like that. So this is just like structural stuff, like how to develop the structure. It's not necessarily at this stage, even about it being like a perfect portrait of me. Like I'm just right now, like kind of seeking and looking for information. And that's how I'll end up with like a really strong portrait is by like drawing structurally, thinking about these larger planes and pushing my drawing through the, process of drawing, pushing it closer and closer to me. Right now, it, if it doesn't look like me, I'm not really super worried. I'm, I'm, it will. If I follow the process of establishing structure, eventually I will be able to whittle the drawing towards being an accurate rendering of me. A lot of times when we're drawing the figure, you know, like in the beginning, You know, if you think about the idea that it's the details that really helped us to establish um, what a person may look like, then you really don't have those in the beginning. You shouldn't be creating details in the beginning, because if you do, you might make some details you really like, but then they won't be in the correct relationship to uh, the proportional location often. They're, you know, um, like they're in the wrong place, but they look good. And like, that's not really going to get you a portrait that ends up looking like the reference that you're working from. And our goal is to get to a place where the drawing looks like us, not that the drawing is just a nice drawing. Like, I don't want drawings that are nice that don't look like you. And so let them, you know, it's interesting because I hear from students sometimes like, what my own experience can be with working on a portrait, which is that, you know, there's a, a place in the beginning where sometimes they just, they feel like they are, like, like things that you've established are really correct. And then the longer you work into it, the more you start to realize that the thing you thought was correct was really not. And there's like an uncomfortable development that has to occur. There's like a stage in the in the process of making a portrait where you sort of had it and then you lose it and then it comes back later on. So you have to kind of like work through the motions with the portrait to find to find the person that you're drawing. And so in this case, it will be you, which is actually really hard because like we we judge our imperfections so much and uh, we tend to focus highly on them. When we draw, we, we tend to hyper focus on the things which maybe we see as an imperfection. And by accident, therefore, sort of overemphasize it sometimes. So be conscious of that, like overemphasizing something which you hyper focus on, just as a person. And let the drawing go through the uncomfortable stages where it doesn't look quite right and you're trying to figure things out because our goal is to figure things out. Okay, so let's see if I can move this so that I can get in here. I'm just gonna go through and start to reestablish planes. You see. 
And so, you know, I've been drawing for almost 20 minutes. And so now I can start to like look at more, perhaps like whittling away at the harder edge planes to start to, you know, find me in this, in this portrait. So the whole process is constantly like adding, correcting, adding, correcting. And, you know, not worrying about like, you know, making something that I don't want to change. You want to change it, like let it change. Let it grow and develop into what it needs to be. Don't put restrictions like on the drawing by saying, oh, I finished that eye. I don't want to mess up that eye. So I'm going to like, um, leave it alone, like, because in the end, it might not match the next eye. So you have to try to work the whole portrait all at once and try to find ways to incorporate, like, all the things we've learned about drawing um, to, to get the drawing as close to being accurate as possible. And again, I'm looking for accuracy in the beginning, that's really going to help you later on to make it look more, more like you. So continuing to reinforce like the planes, looking for your big shapes. Later on, you can look for the subtle differences in the planes, but you want to, in the beginning, focus on finding the correct relationships between the lights and the darks, because those structural relationships are what are going to give you um, the strongest uh, accuracy in the drawing in terms of structure. So again, like establishing those planes will help you later on to make it look more like you. Okay, questions? So that would be, that's 20 minutes into the drawing basically. <laughs> 